Top. So I want to talk to you today about breaking off the spirit of witchcraft. Somebody say amen. Katie Bonilla from Boston. Praise God. Now lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you. Continue to move. Do your work. Let your will be done. And I declare every sabotaging, lying, manipulating spirit will be destroyed, will be exterminated. And I thank you now. Every single person who connects to me on this broadcast today would experience the refiner's fire and would experience the power of God upon their lives from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you are ready to receive today, I want you to say amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Well, friends, uh, of course, today is officially the new Hebrew month and next week. I'm going to release a prophetic word for the month of May. Amen. Someone say May Day. Someone say Mayhem on the enemy. So next Friday, I'm going to release the prophetic word of the month for the month of May. And today, we have officially stepped into the Hebrew month of E-R. I-Y-A-R. Amen. And this is a month of love. This is a month of healing. This is a month of fulfillment. So in the month of May, get ready for a fulfillment of the clothing of the power and the glory of God. The month of ER. Someone say amen. And uh, next Friday, I'm going to begin to talk more about that. But today, we have officially stepped into the new Hebrew month. So you're going to experience a shift. And whenever there's a shift, like I said earlier, the enemy is always going to try to nitpick and delay and try to tag on. But we break every tag. We break every attachment. And we break any absurd foul slime that the devil is trying to put upon you it's removed 100 percent in the name of jesus amen and if you're with me today say hallelujah so today is officially the new hebrew month of er and er stands for i am the god that healeth thee where he turns all of your bitter into sweet and like i said next friday i'm going to release the prophetic word of the month for may we're going to go deeper into the revelation and the insight and the impartation of what you can expect for this new month of may and for the hebrew month of er someone say amen and amen well today friends i want to talk about breaking off the spirit of witchcraft because whenever you are on the increase whenever you are in advancement the enemy is going to try to sabotage you with doubts, with criticism, with lies, the spirit of manipulation. Whenever you are in the increase, and I, I prophesy now, you are increasing and upgrading in the glory of God. And because you're moving up and you're moving out and forward, the enemy is going to try to tag you and be a little straggler and squatter and hold you back. But no, no, not today. Every tentacle is cut off. Every tentacle, every cobweb, every slime and dime of the enemy is destroyed in Jesus' name. So as you are increasing in the glory of God, the enemy is always going to try to attack with slime, with lies, uh, with curses, with jealousy. And even, uh, of course, I'm sure many of you, you've been experiencing this because, of course, as I declared, the Lord declared, April is the month of the greatest transition of your life. And as you're being transitioned and transfigured and things are shifting and moving and as you're leaving the old, remember, he's no longer here. He has risen, which means you are no longer there. You're no longer there in Egypt. You're no longer there in the old Adamic nature. He had about kind of, you're no longer there. You have also risen with Jesus Christ. Some would say, I'm rising. So as we are in this great open window this season of time as we're in the season of increased advancement and breakthrough the enemy is always going to try to come and succumb your work or try to dumb down numb down try to delay and sabotage what god's doing in your life but be encouraged friends because god is exposing exterminating cleansing and washing and you are about to increase like never before so today i want to talk about breaking off the spirit of witchcraft amen Breaking off the spirit of witchcraft because there's so much nonsense going on today in the body of Christ. And so many people who act like they're for you, they're not. They're messengers of Satan. They're in the soul. They're in the flesh. They are conjuring up false lies, gossip, slander, accusation, trying to defame your name, assassinate your character, trying to go against God's anointed and stop God's move. But woe to those who try to go against God's servants. Woe to those who try to put their mouth 
on the servant of the Lord. I'm telling you, friends, get ready for everything to backfire in Jesus' name. Amen. So first and foremost, I want to go into the word of God. Amen. I have, hallelujah, I have a word uh, to share with you. And I want to go into the key verse here today. Hallelujah. And I, I'm so excited. Amen. To uh, minister tonight here in Grand Junction. We always see such incredible miracles and demonstrations of power. Genuinely extraordinary miracles. Undeniable. Outstanding. Extraordinary. Jaw dropping. Awesome miracles. And all the glory goes to Jesus. And all the God's people said amen. So let's go over to first. Kings, amen. Let's go over to First Kings, uh, chapter 19. First Kings 19, and we're going to read from verses 1 and on as I pinned here. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets, um, all the prophets, the false prophets, prophets of Baal with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger, see a messenger of Satan, a messenger of Jezuezi Bezi. Then Jezuezi sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as one of them by this time tomorrow. You see, here's Jezebel releasing an attack, releasing a curse. Here's Jezebel releasing a threat. So we understand that whenever you, you hit the devil in the juggler in the mouth, you clip him on the jaw, whenever you make an impact, in the things of God, whenever you're moving and advancing, the enemy is threatened by you. Therefore, he tries to push you back or he tries to back you down. So here's the enemy, a messenger of Satan, a messenger of Jezebel, trying to threaten the man of God, trying to threaten his people. So may the gods do to me. And more also, if I do not make your life as a life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Now we cancel, we nullify, we destroy, and we exterminate every word curse. And we declare, let it go back to the sender upon their chinny chin chin and upon their big head in Jesus' name. Then uh, Elijah was afraid. And he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. So now here's Elijah. Elijah is afraid for his life, and he begins to retreat. He begins to run away. And of course, you know the story. Elijah runs into a cave. Now, let me tell you, friends, this is not time for you to run and hide. This is not time for you to retreat. Some of you, you've been retreating. Some of you, you've been hiding. Some of you, and amen, go back to the secret place of prayer. Go back to the hidden abode of the Lord. But many of us, as we are being transfigured and we're experiencing this transition, here Jezebel is trying to push back. But who here knows that every pushback will become a payback. Every realm of pushback is going to become a Clap back. Amen. So here's Jezebel sending a messenger of Satan, trying to threaten, trying to push back, trying to delay, trying to sabotage, trying to stir up fear and conjure up a false narrative. Good to see you, Wesley. And here is Jezuezi Bezi trying to stop Elijah. And you know what? It worked. Do you know why? Because Elijah had an open door. Someone say, preach Dr. Ben. Elijah had an open door. And sometimes, hear me now, this is going to help some of you. Sometimes, after your greatest victory, many times the enemy will try to attack. Think of the life of King David. After David's greatest victory, David was seated on the throne. He was comfortable. He was in peace. And there, there was an open door for the enemy to try to tempt and to sway and to persuade away from the things of God. So here, after Elijah's greatest victory, now he acted like a little chihuahua dog. He acted like a little chihuahua, little bunny, and he retreated and he ran away to his daddy. He ran back to his older brother. He ran back into the cave and he began to hide out because he was so afraid. Now, friends of God, the enemy will always attack those who are advancing in the kingdom. The enemy will always attack those that are advancing and making a mark and a dent 
in the things of God. So consider yourself blessed. That's what Jesus said. Blessed are you when you were persecuted, when you're falsely accused, when you're slandered. Blessed are you when you experience trials and tribulation. If you're with me today, say amen. Give us some hearts and likes and let's help build up this atmosphere and the algorithms in the mighty name of Jesus. So here's Jezebel. And of course, Jezebel, it could stand for a false prophet. Jezebel can stand for a spirit of perversion and seduction. Jezebel is a lying false prophetess that lies, false lies, false prophecies. And Jezebel, of course, is very influential because through the seductive nature, through the temptuous nature, Jezebel can string and sway and begin to sway away people from your life. So many of you, you're, you're probably experiencing a Jezebel spirit trying to sway things, trying to sway you away from your assignment. But we say no, and we do not tolerate the ways of Jezebel. Amen. And that was one of the things that Jesus, Yeshua, had against one of the churches in the book of Revelation. This one thing I have against you, you tolerate that false prophet named Jezebel in your church, in your congregation. You tolerate, you accept, you allow that wicked witch to continue to conjure and to continue to do what she likes to do. But we close the door today and the door is shut by the blood of Jesus and we blood block the airwaves. We blood block the atmosphere and we blood block our lives in Jesus name. Somebody say, I am cover. And so here's Jezebel attacking Elijah. You see, Whenever a man, woman of God, whenever a ministry is moving, whenever a ministry is shaking, there is always going to be a Jezebelic type of attack, a false prophetic move, a false move of signs and wonders, a false, I'm gonna say false, a false move of prophecies, trying to bewitch, trying to trick trying to manipulate and deviate and deceive and destroy the work of God. But I'm telling you, God is giving you eagle eyes. God is going to give you 2020 vision. Everything will be exposed as it is. And everything is going to be visible in the light of God's glory. Somebody say, I see in the name of Jesus. You're about to see all the tactics of the enemy, even from a mile away, from miles away, even before it even tries to come close upon you. So here's Jezebel attacking Elijah. You see, the enemy is always threatened by a true man and woman of God. The enemy is always threatened and will release false threats, shallow words, very shallow. It's just like a, an old dog with no bark, just like an old dog. It barks, but it has no teeth. Amen. So here you see Jezebel attacking Elijah. Now I want to encourage you before I go into these 10 points of witchcraft, because some of you, you may be experiencing some witchcraft, whether you know it or not. So we're going to expose it and we're going to get into it and get into some revelation and some insight in Jesus name. So here we understand that as God's moving, the enemy is also trying to move. And the enemy is always looking for the open door. Elijah had an open door and he retreated. He was afraid for his life and he ran away into the cave. Are you ready to come bursting out with the spirit of acceleration? Are you ready like Samson at his last breath? Samson, the spirit of might came upon Samson and he was restored in that moment and boom, he destroyed even more of the enemies at that one moment at the end because you will always have better and greater in the last because he's always saved the best for last, amen. So let me tell you friends, we're gonna get into 10 symptoms of witchcraft, 10 symptoms of witchcraft. And I declare over you, every symptom of witchcraft is going to break off of your life in Jesus' name. Now, you may be experiencing one of them or maybe multiple, but I declare today under this anointing, under the sound of my voice, I declare under this atmosphere, every single person will receive breakthrough, freedom, healing, and deliverance, and relief, salvation, sozo, in the mighty name of Jesus, if you're ready to receive, I want to say amen. So the first symptom of witchcraft, okay, the first symptom of witchcraft is, and there's many, but today I'm just going to go into 10. The first symptom of witchcraft is fear and intimidation. Fear and intimidation. The enemy always wants to release fear and havoc and intimidation. The enemy is always trying to get his people to be afraid. 
And that's what Jesus said. One of the, one of the greatest, uh, one of the most repeated things Jesus, Yeshua said is do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. So the first symptom of witchcraft is fear and intimidation. Let me ask you, have you felt afraid recently? Have you felt intimidated, threatened? Have you felt bullied by a narcissistic spirit, by a lying spirit? Have you felt afraid for whatever reason? You're afraid of what's gonna happen with your life. You're afraid of what's gonna happen in the economy, what's gonna happen in this country, in the United States. Have you felt afraid, intimidated? No, 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 listen friends, you close the door to fear. And one of the first symptoms of witchcraft is fear and intimidation. If you're with me today, say amen. Number two, the second symptom, of witchcraft. And why am I talking about symptoms? Because symptom is a manifestation. Symptom is a fruit or it is a face of witchcraft. Okay. Now in the Latin, witchcraft means to be witty and crafty. And witchcraft is a spiritual power or a spiritual energy. Okay. Witchcraft is a spiritual power or a spiritual energy. It is a mixed spirit, a conjured up spirit. So it's a spirit of intimidation, fear, it's a lying spirit. So the spirit of witchcraft will always try to release fear and intimidation. And it's a power, it's an energy that's all around us. I mean, this world is, is still under uh, the guise of the devil because we live in a fallen world. But those who are born again in Christ Jesus, amen, we have the resurrected spirit of glory that lives and abides and dwells on the inside. And it's our job to take authority and dominion in our personal lives, in our family, and wherever we go, and slowly but surely in Jesus' name, the glory of God will arise, even though the earth is surrounded with deep, gross darkness. So the first symptom of the atmospheres or the spiritual powers, energies of witchcraft, all right, is number one, fear and intimidation. The second symptom is depression. My, my, my. Have you been feeling a little sorry for yourself? Have you been feeling a little sad? Whatever reason, you're filled with sorrow, you're filled with sadness, you feel sad. You've, it's like this weird narrative of woe is me, you want to throw a little pity party, you want people to be empathetic and sympathetic and you know to comfort you. Just get out, just take your thumb out of your mouth, stop being a big baby, come on, stop wearing some diapers, come on, put on your big boy, big girl pants and rebuke that spirit of depression because it's a lie. That's why one of the uh, other greatest instructions in the whole New Testament in the epistles of Paul is rejoice. Therefore, I say rejoice. Rejoice when you're persecuted. Praise God. Blessed are you when you're suffering. But I feel the Holy Ghost. Yikarama. Blessed are you when you're being attacked, when you're thirsty and are blessed, happy. That word blessed in the Greek means to be happy. So you should be happy, Gilmore. Amen. You should be happy, happy Gilmore. You should be ecstatic. You should be enthralled. You should be thrilled. Glory to God when the enemy is trying to attack you. So the second symptom of witchcraft is depression. Let me, let me ask you, have you retreated and felt sad? You feel overcome, overwhelmed by a spirit of sorrow, sadness, and depression. You cut that off. You rebuke that in Jesus' name because it is not your portion. That that's why the joy of the Lord is your strength. And many times when you're sad, I mean, physiologically, biologically, scientifically, it's proven. Whenever you feel sad or stressed, filled with anxiety, your immune system in your body begins to weaken and your body begins to get infirmed. Come on, get your happy, happy, dappy pants on. Come on, get shingaraba, shata. And so he must be filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's why when they got drunk on the new wine of the Holy Spirit, Ibababa, it cannot creep in. It had no place in their life. So number two, second symptom of witchcraft is depression. The third symptom of witchcraft is lies, okay? Lies. It lies in your mind, lies in your heart, lies all around you. So look at the story of Job. The enemy tried to lie to Job. The friends tried to lie to Job. The enemy tried to lie to God about Job. So whenever there's a spirit of witchcraft in operation, there's lies, which really is a spirit of manipulation. There's lies, 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 okay? And lies, of course, is the opposite of truth. So if you're struggling with believing in lies, if you're struggling with believing in lies, you're struggling with lies in your mind. Oh, it's always going to be like this. It's never going to change. Blah, blah, blah. Bang, bang, bang. Wah, wah, wah. Then you need the spirit of truth to set you free. You need the spirit, shika. You need the spirit of truth to come upon you. The word of God 
is the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So you need the truth to set you free. So lies are the third symptom of witchcraft. Number four, the fourth symptom of witchcraft is manipulation. Now, the very definition of witchcraft is manipulation. And what does manipulate mean? It means to contort, to distort. It means to manipulate. It means to change the form or the nature of something. Who knows that uh, just uh, a, a, a white lie is still a lie, okay? And of course, uh, we have a saying called a white lie, a white lie, which is like an exaggerated truth. A white lie or an exaggerated truth is still a lie. And the enemy loves to manipulate. Look at the story of Jesus. Uh, I believe in Matthew chapter four. After the 40 days of fasting in the wilderness, here the enemy tries to manipulate God's word against Jesus. But of course, Jesus knew the word. He, as a Jewish boy, as a Jewish man, he studied the Torah and he was filled with the Torah, with the Bible, with the word of God. So when the enemy tried to manipulate God's word, did God say? Look at the story of Adam and Eve. Did God say? The, the enemy took God's word and he manipulated it and he changed the form to use it against you. But number four, the fourth symptom of witchcraft is manipulation. And many times the enemy will try to manipulate scenarios, scenes, situations against you. Number five, the fifth symptom of witchcraft is heaviness, the spirit of heaviness. And what is the spirit of heaviness? It's an oppressive spirit that causes you to lag, to delay, and causes you to be heavy, okay? It's like it's when an atmosphere is so heavy, it's hard for you to breathe. When an atmosphere is so heavy, it's difficult for you because you feel like you're being judged, criticized. Uh, there's a critical spirit, there's a cynical spirit, spirit of judgmentalism, religion. But whenever there's a spirit of heaviness, you become tired. Okay, you become tired physically. And many of you, you're probably feeling very, very tired. And not tired because you're physically active and you're busy, okay? But tired because it's a spirit, okay? A spirit of heaviness will try to tire you out, wear you out. That's what the Bible says. You will run and not grow faint. You will walk and not grow weary. So the spirit of witchcraft tries to release heaviness over you. What's, what is that? Burdens, unnecessary drama, unnecessary layers in the atmosphere that tries to delay and sabotage and tries to lag your acceleration and your forward movement and your breakthrough. That's a spirit of heaviness. So many of you are probably feeling tired. You're feeling weary. You feel depressed. You feel sad. You want to give up. That's not... That, that's not the Lord. That is the devil, my friends. And many times, people who are experiencing a spirit of heaviness, shoo, yingara brata. They feel drained. They feel empty. They feel vexed. That's why in the Psalms and the Bible, it talks about my soul feels vexed, okay? Your soul is depleted, but God's about to replenish you because he is the spirit of refreshing and he is the replenishing spirit, amen? He is the reviving spirit. Can I get a hallelujah? So number five, the spirit of heaviness. Sometimes you go to a city, you go to a region, you go to even some churches and you feel heavy. You feel heavier, you feel lethargic. All right, that's the spirit of witchcraft. Number six, the sixth symptom of witchcraft is slander, gossip, and accusation. Beware of those who sow seeds of discord. In fact, the Bible says to mark them, amen. The Bible says to mark those who sow seeds of discord. And whenever there's witchcraft, there's always he say, she say. There's always unnecessary drama that's trying to pull you in and trying to stop the move of God. No, listen. If you move in Matthew 18, then you believe in confronting. You believe in going to your brother and your sister. I'm not going to entertain the lies of the enemy. I'm not going to entertain the spirit of gossip, slander, and accusation. And let me tell you, today, even in the body of Christ, there's so much slander. It's really the accuser of the brethren. And there's so much slander, accusation, gossip that has been released. And we as believers, we need to shut it down. And whenever there's witchcraft and operation, the enemy uses people. Hear me now. The enemy even uses leaders and pastors to try to make you look bad. The enemy tries to twist and to turn and to manipulate, to distort, to contort, to make you look bad. And that emits and releases negative spiritual energy. It's a curse. So we remove that today. In Jesus' name, gossip, slander, and accusation. It is not your portion. I'm telling you, get rid of that. Repent. 
Get rid of that in your life, in your family, in your camp. It has no room in this place. Number seven, the seventh symptom of witchcraft. It is infirmity. Okay, infirmity. And what does infirm mean? It means to be weak. It means to be weakened. We understand that infirmity is a spirit and many people's bodies are infirmed. So whenever there's witchcraft in operation, people are getting sick. Come on, somebody. Whenever there's witchcraft, people are getting sick. That's why if you go to a shaman, you go to a witch doctor, you might get healed for a moment, but that's a spirit of deception because you open up a door and you tie, attach your soul to the enemy and you become even worse. You become even more sick. So the spirit of infirmity is always related to witchcraft. And whenever you maybe have a headache or a migraine, maybe you feel pain in your body or there's repeated cycles or patterns or there's chronic disease, chronic sickness, that's a spirit of witchcraft. And many times it's not even... It's not even your mental or your spiritual, it's or, or your physical, it's actually spiritual. And whenever I teach on healing and miracles, a lot of people are dealing with infirmity in their body because of mental illnesses, because of an open door to lies, because of an because of bitterness or heaviness, unforgiveness in their heart. Okay, so the Lord is going to heal you. And in this month of ER, I am the God that healeth thee. In this month of ER, this is the month of May, the Hebrew month of ER, the month of May is the month of healing and wholeness and breakthrough. So much amen. So infirmity. Whenever you feel weak, and sometimes in political structures and churches or the spirit of religion or different cults, Okay, different atmospheres. The enemy tries to weaken you, belittle you, step on you, and try to make you even weak where your immune system is down, and your body becomes infirmed. That is a spirit of witchcraft. Number eight, the eighth symptom of witchcraft is chaos. Chaos. Now, who here knows that the pandemic, the root word of pandemic is pan, and pan in the Greek is the Greek God for pandemonium. So pandemonium, pan, is a Greek God for chaos. And who knows that chaos is not of the Lord. In fact, God always is a God of peace, okay? God is a God of peace, he's a God of shalom. So you must have peace in your heart. You must have peace in your life, amen. You, you must create peace in your sacred place, places of peace, places of shalom. So whenever there's chaos, that's the enemy. Whenever there's drama, that's the enemy. Whenever there's he say, she say, now I am not going to go down your little rabbit trail, your little rabbit hole of high school nonsense. No, that's the enemy. That's the spirit of witchcraft. And uh, so the spirit of chaos uh, tries to bring destruction, tries to bring insanity, tries to bring, uh, uh, tries, tries to destroy. And the spirit of chaos and pandemonium always makes something little into a big deal. Always tries to turn something that small into something bigger and greater than it is. And that's one of the rules of warfare, my friends. Some would say rules of warfare. Some of the rules of warfare is to not allow a little thing to become big because the enemy will always try to accentuate and expound and exponentially uh, expose something that's so small and so little and try to make it a big thing. That's the So the spirit of chaos, chaos means there's no peace. Chaos, pandemonium, insanity. Okay, and of course today, there's a lot of people that are going insane. A lot of people that are mentally ill because of spirits. A lot of people that are going cray cray because of spiritual warfare, because of witchcraft, okay? Number nine, the ninth symptom of witchcraft, it is poverty, it's poverty. Now, I'm not saying, uh, I'm not giving you an excuse or a badge for you to be lazy, okay? For you to be a, a user, for you to uh, just be lazy living in your mama's basement, no. But those who are experiencing poverty, many times that's a sign of witchcraft because the enemy always loves to steal, kill, and destroy. So because the enemy loves to, st he, he doesn't love, I mean, that's just his nature. The enemy is the one who steals, he kills and he destroys. So the enemy, whenever he tries to inflict and uh, incite poverty upon God's people, then you know that it's probably a spirit of witchcraft. Why is that? Because the devil wants to keep you powerless. He wants to keep you bound. He wants to keep you a slave. He wants to keep you as the debtor, not the lender, as the debtor, not the one who's free. 
Amen. But God wants to set you free by giving you financial prosperity. And many times as your soul prospers, so will you prosper in all areas of your life. So poverty is a great sign of witchcraft. And the devil tries to weaken your financial freedom, weaken your financial power, try to strip you bare, try to take away your assets, your possessions, so that you own nothing and you have nothing, so that you have no power, you have no ability to be free and to do what you're called to do. The spirit of poverty causes people to do crazy things. Poverty causes people to do crazy things. No, you're not meant to be homeless. You're not meant to be homeless. No, you're not meant to be a beggar. No, you're not meant to be worried. You're not meant to be distracted. No, all right, because the spirit of poverty is the opposite of the kingdom of abundance. So Jesus is breaking off the spirit of poverty and poverty, uh, which many times can be even tied, be tied with stinginess or greed or lack of graciousness, okay? Uh, that type of spirit where you hoard, you hoard, it's mine, it's mine. I'm not gonna give it away, it's mine. It's, it's a spirit of greed. That is a symptom of witchcraft. Now, number 10, the 10th uh, symptom of witchcraft. It is division. It is division. We see Jezebel tried to divide Elijah. Jezebel tried to divide and to destroy. Jezebel tried to divide, sow seeds of discord. Jezebel tried to divide and she did, it did. And so whenever there's division, that is a spirit of witchcraft. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about separating yourself because you and I, we must be consecrated, amen. And there's times God commands you, instructs you to separate yourself from certain people, to abstain, to separate, to consecrate. Look at the story of Daniel. Daniel consecrated, separated himself from different people and different individuals, certain things, amen. But that is not a spirit of division. Separation to holiness is God, but dividing for destruction and dividing for a spirit of rebellion, that is a spirit of witchcraft. So whenever there's division, my friends, whenever there's division, then you must understand that that might be the spirit of witchcraft because Jezebel will always try to turn people against you. It will always try to have a sour pity party, to throw a tantrum on the toilets, to try to act like the victim, and to try to make you look bad, and to try to divide, and to try to steal away certain things. But let me tell you, friends, the enemy is being exposed, and God is exterminating every symptom of this spirit of witchcraft in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're with me today, I want you to say amen. I want you to give us some hearts and likes, and I want you to say hallelujah. Jezebel attacked Elijah, and he retreated, and he ran away, and he hid himself in the cave. Let me tell you, it's time for you to come out of hiding. It's time for you to rise up and to shine the glory of God. Stop hiding. Don't be afraid. The devil is a liar. The devil is a pipsqueak loser. You have the victory. The blood of Jesus, one little drop of Yeshua's blood, did it all and does it all. It's done and it's finished. And some of you, you may be struggling with a spirit of witchcraft or the spirit of witchcraft all around you. You might have headaches, you might have migraines. Maybe you're questioning yourself. You feel like there's confusion, there's chaos, and you go on cray cray and there's depression and there's a spirit of heaviness and there's poverty and, and there's closed doors and there's manipulation and there's slander and division and fear. And I'm telling you, God is about to expose and exterminate because because it has no place in your life today in Jesus' name. If you're with me today, I want you to say amen and give us some hearts and likes. Now, friends, I'm gonna to begin to pray for you in this moment, but I want you to comment if any one of these symptoms is bearing witness with you, if you are struggling or dealing with any one of these symptoms, I want you to comment below, amen, in Jesus' name, and I'm gonna believe that today there's gonna to be a breakthrough and a breaking off of these symptoms or these manifestations of this oppressive demonic spirit. But guess what? You have the victory. You are risen. You're seated with Christ at the right hand of God. You're seated in heavenly places. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. So I want you to comment below in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for the fire of God. Thank you, Lord, for the power of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for healing, miracles, and for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody thank the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Karabonda Karabrata. 
I need to send a quick message here. And then I want to pray for you. Amen. I'm telling you, breakthrough is here. And breakthrough is in the atmosphere. And again, some of you who are struggling with infirmity, maybe you have insomnia. It's been difficult for you to, to sleep. Some of you, you've been getting attacked in the midnight hour, even getting attacked in, your, in the night hour in your dream realm. That is a sign and a spirit of witchcraft as well. Praise God. I just need to send a message here. Shut up, Baba. Come on, just thank the Lord right now. Praise God. Continue to praise the Lord. You're dealing with some of them. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody thank the name of Jesus right now. Come on, praise the name of Yahweh right now. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God, our healer. Hallelujah. Shara Trouble sleeping. Daily spirit. And you know what? Even, even witchcraft that manipulates to digital warfare. Digital warfare. Do you know how much digital warfare I've experienced for a number of years? People making false fake accounts to try to attack you or weird digital warfare to try to cut you off. And, you know, again, the enemy is a prince of the airwaves. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sharabata. Thank you, Lord. Rabaseta la Angie tumors, joints, problems, gallstones. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Now listen, I want you to lift up your hands. Father, I thank you for every monitoring, sabotaging spirit is now rebuked. I thank you that every spirit of fear, intimidation, every division, chaos, confusion, depression, infirmity is being bound and rebuked now in Jesus' name. From the top of the head to the soles of the feet, I release the fire of God, the fire of God, Shekarabata, the fire of God. Every unclean, infirm spirit, leave these children now. Leave these children now. From the top of the head to the soles of the feet, Ziba Kambo Rosata, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of Jesus Christ. Now, some of you are getting delivered right now. Some of you, you're feeling it lift and shift. Some of you are probably feeling light now, or you're shaking, or you feel, you feel shaking within. That's the power of God. The kingdom of God is greater than the kingdom of death and darkness. Zikata, zikata. We break every soul tie. We break every witchcraft tie and attachment. Every attachment of the enemy in your soul, on your body in the spear realm is broken cut. We cut the silver cord, the fire of God. Sherabata, feel chills. Yes, I am shaking. I felt something shift. Now, some of you, I sense right now, it coming out of your stomach or out of your body. So some of you are probably wanting to even throw up or puke. That's the power of God delivering you in Jesus' name. By the finger of God, the kingdom is now demonstrated right now. I declare as a man of God, every unclean thing in your body is now coming out. Now, in Jesus' name, fire of the Ruska Tarabata. Touch the loosen. I declare healing in your mind, healing in your heart, in your soul, in your body. Reka Sota. Deeper, Lord. Deeper still. Someone say deeper. Shandalalaba. Feel lighter. Fire of Jesus. Shoo. I'm telling you, some of you have been getting attacked by a spirit of Python, 
by a spirit of divination. So it's been even difficult for you to pray. It's been difficult for you to read the word, to open the word of God. It's been difficult for you to even worship Jesus. You've been struggling with lies. Does Jesus love me? Am I worthy? That's the devil, my friend. And it's out of your mind and your life. I want you to put your right hand on your head right now. Lord, I thank you. I come in agreement with the realm of deliverance, with the power of God. And I take authority. Shinga bosi kaba fire. Fire. I take authority up and out in Jesus' name. Cut out in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Rabata. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Every hidden thing is now exterminated. Every hidden thing. Every tie, every attachment, every tag, every hidden thing shoo, is now exposed and exterminated by the blood of Jesus from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. I want you to lift up your hands wherever you're watching from. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. In Jesus' name, I close every door to every act of evil, witchcraft, and wickedness and I repent for any of my sins known and unknown come and fill me Holy Spirit and break off everything that is not of you in my life in my mind in my heart in my body and all around me in Jesus name I take authority over this atmosphere and I plead the blood of Jesus and I rebuke it and I renounce it and I release it back to the pit of hell in Jesus mighty name. Somebody say hallelujah. Now many of you are experiencing freedom and breakthrough right now in this broadcast. If that's you, I want you to comment what is happening, what is experiencing and just yield to the Lord and let Jesus take you deeper. Let Jesus take you deeper to the root of it, every root of witchcraft, every root of divination, every root of white magic, black magic, sorcery, every root is now uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone say hallelujah. Glory be to God. I feel breakthrough in this place. Carmen says, I am coughing. Amen. Be healed and be delivered. Every generational curse, every soul tie, witchcraft, necromancy, be bound and be stopped now. Come up now out of you, Carmen, in the mighty name of Jesus. Tow in Jesus' name. Rabababasa. Arlene says, feeling light and delivered. Feeling a lightning on my shoulders. Shebababa, I felt dizziness and sick to my stomach. That's the glory of God delivering you now. Freedom, lightness. Shoo. It's broken. Every spell, hex, and vex. Incantation. That's right, Christine. That yawning is the devil coming out of you. It is a demon spirit coming off of you. My body was shaking and I felt something lift off of me. My moon says feeling free. There's a shift occurring right now. Marika says lots of yawning. Yes, Korabata Tera Brata. That's right, every incubus, succubus, spirit wife, spirit husband be bound in Jesus' name. Every fantasy, every evil, wicked, fantasical spirit that's tied to you sexually be broken in Jesus' name. Sha! Ruskata. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Hands are warm. Ha ha ha. Sheta ta ta. Somebody say hallelujah. Jesus, 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 be all the glory. Jesus, be all the glory. Come on, lift up your hands, friends. Thank you, Lord. It's done and it's finished. It's completed. Ha ha, Pastor Sharon says broke down crying. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shake it, kick it, kick it, shake it, kick it, kick it, shake it, kick it, kick it. 
That migraine is leaving you right now. That headache is leaving you right now. Shake it, kick it, kick it. Zere da ruru su toro ruru do to. Shinda la la batata. Somebody say hallelujah. Rebe sunda la da kata. Today in the name of Jesus, we declare freedom. We declare wholeness. We declare breakthrough. This is the day of your salvation. This is the day where the Lord has set you free. Hallelujah. Somebody say, touch me, Lord. Somebody say, touch my family. Touch my loved ones, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, hallelujah. Now, friends, be encouraged. Because Jesus is king. And he's on the throne. And he's on the throne of your life. He's on the throne of your heart. Amen. Now, if you receive today, I want you to say amen. If you receive today from the Lord, from his servant, from the man of God today, I want you to say amen. Friends, on this Friday, ha, 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 bang, bang, bang. The devil is a liar. Jesus is king. The enemy is under your feet. Amen. Now, friends, I want to say thanks for joining me. I hope you watch this broadcast. Rewatch it. Tag somebody, share this on your wall. Amen. And I'm telling you, friends, what the Lord's about to do in your life, no devil, no witch, no warlock, no coven, no false wolf, or sheep, no false prophet. Nothing can stop what Jesus has destined for you and your family. It's been inscribed, written, and sealed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Someone say hallelujah. Choo. Mighty God. Mighty God. Glory be to God. If you receive today, I want to say amen. Give us some hearts and likes. And please share this on your wall. Give me a follow. Give me a like. Follow me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and here on Facebook. And thank you for watching, friends. I hope you're encouraged. Hey, Baba Tata. The power of God is your portion. Jesus sets the captives free. And he takes captivity captive. Amen. Bless you. Love you. Thanks to all of our subscribers here. Consider uh, being part of our subscription here. Amen. And as well, praise God. One more time, next week, we have our conference, Open Heavens, Power and Glory. Open Heavens, Power and Glory. With John Ramirez, Jack Hamilton, and myself in Orange County, California. Be a part of this move. Drive in, fly in, crawl in. Do whatever you got to do. You could even join online, but you must register. It's going to be a very powerful time, a life-changing conference. Amen. Now, friends of God, I don't have much time, but those who want to sow, I want to open up a time for you to sow and to bless the Lord. Amen. If you've been blessed today, I want you to say amen. I want to open up a time for you to give and to sow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Yah. I want to open up a time for you to sow in the mighty name of Jesus and to bless the Lord, to bless the work of His hands, this ministry. Amen. If one of our members can just hurry and copy and paste. But thank you all for watching and for joining. Amen. And for being a part of this live. <clears throat> we pinned, thank you, Alana, the ways to give and the ways to sow. If you desire to sow a seed, amen. Sow a seed and bless the Lord today on this Friday, on the Shabbat. And as we step into the new Hebrew month of ER, amen. Bless your friends. I love you. I'll see you soon. I need to get going now. Thank you for watching. Love you and bless you. And all of those who are subscribing, liking, following, and sowing a seed. Thank you much in advance. God bless.